Thanks for checking out this video. And if you'd like to find out lots more information about the other courses and workshops I offer, both in person and online, simply visit my website at peterkeegan.com. Hello, I'm Peter Keegan, and today I'd like to show you my approach to painting a vibrant garden scene in acrylics. The picture I'm going to be working from today is a picture of the gardens that are based around my own studio, based in Buckinghamshire in the UK, and it's a beautiful picture with a lovely path leading you right up to this lovely little archway. Now I've chosen this picture because of the beautiful contrast. We've got a wonderful range of tones from the dark shadows leading your eye right up to the centre of the picture. Those lovely shadows coming across that lovely path and the other side you've got the bright light hitting all these lovely flowers. So you've got a lovely range, a lovely colour palette of greens and then the complementary of the greens, those pinks. So it's a really beautiful engaging picture. I'd like to show you exactly how we paint it. So the materials we're going to be using today are all laid out here. We're going to start off with the paints. I've organised the, the paints on my palette in two sections. I've got my warms on one side and my cool colours on the other. So starting at the top we have titanium white. And then moving along left, we've got my two yellow. So I'm going to use a lemon yellow, which is my brighter yellow and my cadmium yellow. So a little bit darker, a little bit deeper. Um, then I'm going to be using a couple of red colours, but we're not using red today. I'm going to be using a alizarin crimson, a really rich hot pink, and then a slightly cooler one. I've got a magenta, and this is going to help me create the range of bluey pinks and purples that I have in my picture. So that's my warm side. Going to my slightly cooler side, I have um, three greens because there are quite a few greens and I like to use a range of greens in my pictures. So we have a, a bright leaf green and that's going to give me that bright acidic sunlit um, effect that I'm going to need in this picture. And then I have a sap green and a viridian green. So that's the sort of my light and my mid and my dark tones with my greens. Then I have my one blue, which is a French ultramarine blue, and my darkest colour is a raw umber. Now I probably won't use too much of this, I'll try and mix as many of my darks as possible, but it's there if I just need to get just that little bit of darkness. And then the other studio essentials, we've got a nice jar of clean water, um, a plenty of painting wraps to keep me clean, as well as some baby wipes to get the paint off my fingers. And the brushes I am using today are Rosemary & Co's ivory range of brushes. So this is a nylon bristle, which is perfect for acrylic. These brushes are superb. They've got a wonderful bounce in them. And they come in a range of sizes, from my largest being a number 10, right the way down to a number two. And in a, a couple of shapes, there's uh, mostly filberts and flats. I'll use a lot of the filbert brushes for getting the, some of the bigger washes down and then the flat brushes, the uh, square ones, particularly getting a lot of the angular description of the trees and the bushes and the, and the petals of, of all the flowers and the foliage in the picture. The surface I'm working on today is a acrylic painting paper. You can do this on any surface, whether it be a uh, canvas or a board. Just make sure that board is nicely primed. Uh, this is already sealed and primed with some white. So once you have everything set up with your picture all up on your easel, we're ready to get started. So the first thing we're going to need to do is to kill the white of this canvas. Um, I don't like working on a white ground. I think it's really nice to work on a colour ground that hopefully at the end of the picture you're going to see some of that colour radiate through a lot of those broken brush strokes. Now the colour that you choose will very much um, affect the overall atmosphere and the outcome of the picture. Now to be honest there is no real right or wrong colour uh, to put on. It just has to uh, really radiate through that image or that scene that you're working from. So the image that I'm looking at is a very, very bright sunny day. There's a lot of contrast. Um, so it's because of that sunny day, I want to use a very warm colour as opposed to a cool colour. Now, if I was to use something like a red or a yellow and an orange, it's going to give me that bright, warm, sunny day feel. Now, I could paint this picture with a, a, a blue or a purple background. It would not affect the painting, except it would just feel a little bit more calmer, a little bit more a cooler, more like an evening light. But the light here I've got is a bright sunny day, so I'm going to probably choose a colour that's going to go really nicely with those greens, and I'll, I'll choose a yellow. I think that's going to come through a lot of all the lovely foliage, and particularly that path leading up to the beautiful archway. So we're going to start off by killing the white of this. I'm going to pick up a large flat brush, a number two, uh, sorry, a two inch flat brush. I'm going to take a little bit of water, pop it onto the palette, and we're going to go straight away bringing in our lemon yellow and just a little bit of the 
cadmium yellow and a little bit of white as well. And we're going to completely cover the surface of this canvas. Now you don't want to lay this on too thickly with the paint because you want to allow it to uh, dry before you start putting the uh, additional layers on. And don't worry about the image being perfectly even. It doesn't matter if there's a few lighter strokes of different colours, as long as they're all sort of in the same family of the colour wheel, if there are a variety of yellows or if you're doing this with blues or greens, it doesn't have to be perfectly flat. I think it's quite nice to have a, a mixture of different colours all working together. Right, I'm going to pop that uh, brush in there to keep it nice and clean. Now, you can wait for it to dry, or what I'm going to spend some time now is drawing out that composition. So you've got that lovely base colour, you need to find how you're going to draw this picture up. Now, this picture, of course, is all about perspective, about leading your eye through the picture. It's wonderfully inviting, taking you to that lovely centre point. So I need to spend a little bit of time really understanding how this picture is constructed. I'm going to take a, a number two bristle, this is a filbert brush, and I'm going to mix a, a colour that's just going to stand up against that yellow. So it doesn't really matter what colour, I'm just going to go with a sort of a, a bluey turquoise colour. Um, this is all going to get completely painted over, so it's just going to allow you to draw it up, using a bit of water to keep it nice and thin, so it will dry nice and quickly as well. So now I've got my mixture on the palette, let's think about uh, the most important elements to this picture, so this structure, this shape. So I'm going to first just look at this lovely path leading you up to the centre of the picture. So I think it's, it's not quite central, I think it's sort of just roughly below a centre line. So that path is finishing, I'd say, somewhere near there, and it's not quite bang on centre, it's slightly over to the right hand side. Now let's look at this lovely path uh, way and sort of put in this lovely angle shape like this and we've got another one which is I'd say coming to around about there so that's our main shape our main um, form if you like that's taking us up into the picture now let's sort of have a little look there's at the top here we've got some little bushes and shapes and now let's find out where this lovely little wall is up here so I'm going to divide this plane of the picture up with the line this is the top of the wall and that's going to come down here and then I think our lovely little archway is going to be somewhere there. I'm not quite sure yet, but just going to keep it very, very vague at the moment. And you can see by my brush strokes, I'm not being precise, I'm not being tight, I'm just being very, very loose and very, very uh, suggested with these marks. We've got a lovely tree sort of going up there. Now let's look at the, some of the uh, most essential shapes. We've got this lovely little bush on the left here. So what I'm trying to do is uh, to sort of switch my brain off trying to give the, these bushes and flowers uh, sort of a name and a description. The more you sort of allow your brain to give a shape and identity, a name, the more you may be inclined to start drawing sort of flowers quite early on into the picture. And at this stage, it's not about that. You're identifying and breaking down what is a beautiful organisation and bush of, of, of flowers and, and uh, textures and leaves and you're just breaking it down into very, very basic shapes and that's going to help me, uh, first of all, get that strong composition in but secondly, it's going to allow me to create a much looser painting. I don't want to spend ages doing something that's highly detailed. It's going to really tighten me up if I draw out my composition in a detailed way. So keep it nice and loose and suggestive. You're just, the point of these marks, I suppose, are to guide your brush stroke, not to uh, can control it and to keep it tight. If you're going to be trying this at home with one of your own pictures, whether it be a picture of your garden or somewhere you visited, it's a really good idea to work from an image that has a lot of contrast, a lot of tonal value. So you're looking for areas of shadow, like we've got down here, and areas of, of bright light and sunlight and that lovely mixture. And if you, cr if you find and work from a scene that has a range of tonal values, you will get something that's a lot more dynamic, but also something that will have a lot more depth. And that's really essential for a picture like this, where you really want to bring the picture, invite the viewer into the picture and lead them through it. OK, so I have my composition drawn out now and I feel that this has given me a really uh, good base and a strong indication of where I'm going to put my brush strokes. Remember, this is not about creating a very tight, detailed drawing. You're just mapping out 
places to guide your brush to make a very lovely loose painting that will hopefully describe a scene like this very, very well. So once you've got that base composition all drawn out, you're ready to put on your darkest tones first.